Hi everybody, it's Brian from The Podiatry Hive. The video that we're about to, to show you today is all about communication and how we filter our communication and the necessary parts of that, but also the darker sides of that perhaps. The world is full of so much information that there are very many times that if we weren't able to filter things, what would happen is that we would actually have a sensory overload. So what we do is we filter communication. Now just imagine this, that I'm making a cup of tea in the morning and I use a teapot and a tea strainer. What that does is allow into the cup what I want and takes out what I don't want. We do this in communication. And when we look at communication, we think that somebody has a concept in their head of X and when they deliver that communication, it will travel across and land in the other person's head exactly the same way as they thought. Unusually though, what happens is that it ends up as something completely different, P7, X squared, Y, some weird concoction. I'll give you an example from my family life. Liz and I, my wife, were sitting on the lounge one afternoon and saying, and my wife said to our daughter Claire, can you make us a cup of tea please Claire, we're really tired. And Claire went out into the kitchen and she slammed the cups on the bench and she threw the tea bags in. And I went out and said, Claire, what's the matter? And she said, Dad, you heard her, she's a control freak. She's always bossing me around. Now what Liz said was, can you make us a cup of tea, we're tired. But what my daughter heard was, here's my controlling mother telling me what to do again. And the reason is, is that we have a whole lot of filters. And as we said, what our filters do, allow us to use communication effectively, but they're not always to our advantage. What our filters do are this. The first thing they do is we delete the things that we don't want to hear. We distort them and turn them into things that we do want to hear. A third thing we do is we nominalise, we want to give it a name. And the last one is we want to generalise and make it like everything else. So interestingly, your filters are there for you so that you can keep a bit of a mental balance on things. But let's have a look at what they might be. The first filter that we're most conscious of is what we would call our current experiences. So if something's happening for you on any one day, how that filters your communication. And it could be that you've had a fight with your partner or that you've been caught in traffic or something, and then you get to a meeting and that's still in your mind. Another one is our beliefs. And our beliefs are like an idea with a judgment attached to it. Now I remember working in North Queensland with a a, a very, very uh, talented team leader called Tanil, And I said, Tanil, tell me someone that you find difficult to communicate with. And let's make up a, a name, she, Gary. And I said, so tell me about Gary. Oh, Brian, Gary is an idiot. He's just an idiot. I said, well, Tanil, what I want you to do is to take out the Gary's an idiot filter and put in Gary's okay. She said, okay, I'll try that. A couple of days later, I got this email saying, Brian, you wouldn't believe it, the idiot had a good idea. So the interesting thing is that when we look at somebody differently, we get a different experience. A third one that we go through are our values. If you have a clash of values with somebody, then what happens is that we can very often get our communication mixed. Um, a good example is a friend of mine, Gabby, and I was working with Gabby and I saw her one day and I said, you're really animated today, Gab, what's going on? She said, well, my daughter turned 16 today. I said, oh, you're having a party? She said, no, you don't understand. When my kids turn 16, they leave home. So she's moving into a unit in town today and then Tony and I will be free of all the kids. And I thought to myself, that's the worst parenting I've ever heard. So here am I with my set of values sitting in my world, judging someone that has a different set of values. And then the last one that we talk about is what we would call our fundamental operating context. Now they're fancy words, but what that simply means is, what it means is, am I feeling not good enough today? And is that 
the way I'm communicating or am I coming from a place of I'm okay? Now just think about that as a filter. If I'm sitting in that place of feeling not good enough and somebody gives me some feedback or some, some criticism, if I'm in that not good enough space, that will go to the heart and I will feel really damaged and hurt by that. Similarly, if I'm feeling great about myself and somebody gives me some feedback, I'm able to go, wow, isn't that wonderful? That person can help me get better. So what I want you to do over the next little while is look at the person that you have difficulty communicating with and just go through your filters and see if there are some filters in there that you might need to change or adapt. Because as we say in, in NLP, the meaning of my communication is the response that I get. So if you've been communicating with someone and not getting the great results that you want, maybe it's time to have a look at your filters. Good luck with all of that.